politics is changing. And I want to tell you a little bit about politics, how it's changing. But first, let me tell you a little bit of a story. And uh, the first thing is, is there's this guy named Michael Slaby. Michael Slaby was the CTO for the 2008 election campaign for Barack Obama. Um, Michael Slaby is a great guy. As you can see, he looks very political operative. Um, you know, he wears a collar and a suit and all that stuff. He's actually an incredibly smart guy. I know that's a surprise as well for a political operative. Um, I, I guess I should be careful because I guess at this point I am also one. But anyway, Michael Slaby is a technologist. But he's a technologist meaning he knows how to manage technology. He doesn't actually know how to build technology. And so that's where this really incredible person named Harper Reed came in. And so you may notice there's a little bit of a difference between the two of us. Um, specifically, I wear hoodies, um, and he doesn't wear as many hoodies, although towards the end we got him too. But anyway, Michael Slaby, as the person who was finding the CTO for 2012, was kind of wondering, or not wondering, he had this mission that it was like, we need someone who knows engineering. So my background as an engineer, I build software, I build teams, and we execute. And so he was like, we need someone like that. And I was explaining this to my wife, and she told me about this Japanese proverb, which is mochi wa, mochi ya. The idea that if you want mochi, go to the mochi store. Or, <laughs> if you want engineering, you gotta go to the engineers. And so, you know, what do you do when you go to engineers? Well, we build technology. Um, and so we, we set out and we were thinking, you know, what is the first thing you build when you have a billion dollar business that you start from zero and you have 18 months to do it? And so we built a platform and we called it Narwhal. Um, I, I just want to take this time to say, never have us name things. <laughs> um, we, we didn't really think about how Narwhal would resonate with the media. Um, and it really did. So anyway, we built this, this platform, and the idea here was we needed a foundation because the campaign is such a high, intense, high-profile thing, and you cannot mess up. We could not fail. And so what we needed to do is we needed to build this foundation, this infrastructure, these roads to build things on because the, the bottom line is we needed to focus on the product. And the product, we had many products. The products were things like dashboard or call tool, social, our social apps, our mobile apps, all of our contributions and the data. The call tool was this really great application that allowed our volunteers to, to open their mobile phones, open this application, and then do voter contact for us. So then we didn't have to hire volunteers. Hire's a wrong word there. Um, we didn't have to interact with volunteers and get volunteers to help us. Dashboard was our online version of an offline field office. So this is this really exciting way so where a person could come on and they didn't have any opportunities to participate. Maybe they're in a rural area. Maybe they're in an urban area like Chicago that isn't as important as some of our battleground states. And they're able to have a very real participation. Um, we had this really amazing uh, uh, experience where this, this veteran who was in a hospital said, hey, I'm able to participate in this campaign without leaving my bed. That's, <laughs> I never had that before in software. Um, anyway, we also did mobile, we did con contributions, and the data wrapped it all together, and that's where the platform came into play. We had this platform that made it so when you logged into one tool, you were logged into the others. We had all the information together, and we could execute upon it. Obviously, we won, but political technology is not done. We are not done. And like I said in the beginning, politics is still changing. So as you do when you win an election, um, you start thinking about what's next. And so I've been thinking a lot about 2016 and what, what is going to be important in 2016. And there's a couple things that I want to talk to you guys about because I'm worried about these things. I need your help. So the first thing is, is we did a lot of micro-targeting. Um, we did this thing that I'm, I'm trying to talk about more, which is how do we use micro-targeting to push the conversation as close as we can to the voter or to the constituent or to the volunteer. And I call that micro-listening. How do we make that conversation very personal and individual? And you may have seen that in some of our emails. I'm sure you guys got emails. Um, the next one is, this is the thing that I think is new. As content becomes more addressable, as we become more addressable on the internet, I think there's going to be a, a push to be more efficient in our media buying, specifically that micro media buying. You have this new show, House of Cards, which I haven't seen, so don't tell me how it ends. But 
Netflix just produced this and you can watch it at any time. How awesome would it be when all of our media is like that? And in 2016, I think more media is going to be like that, which is going to allow us to address people very individually. This next one is the most important. Well, maybe. Um, voter suppression is very real. It's happening in the U.S. today. The news talks about it a lot. We happen to use Ushahidi, Ushahidi's awesome, to solve some of these problems for us, and it really made a difference in Ohio and Virginia. We need to use technology to solve this problem so it doesn't affect our elections in the U.S. and all over the world. Traditional voter contact is going to become much, much harder. Um, I am 34. I have never mailed anything. I've never used a landline, and I really, I don't think I, I remember the last time I knocked on a door. But that's traditional voter contact. So how do you talk to someone, not like me, but who's 24? or who's going to be 18 in the next election, or who moves around a lot. These are things that we're going to have to solve, and knocking on doors will be still very important, but we need to make sure that we're able to contact that person, contact that, that, that you know, small contingency group that's moving, or just young people. Now, this is the one that really scared me. So in 2008, both the McCain and the Obama campaigns were hacked by a foreign entity. I have no idea who that was. Anyway, um, in 2012, I haven't seen any articles about this yet, but I'm sure someone could say something at some point in time. Um, we were safe. Um, and we were safe because we invested in security. But we went through a lot of tabletop exercises and game days us trying to figure out where the hackers could attack us. And it was scary. They could have really disrupted our process. They could have disrupted our program. They could have disrupted the election. I don't think we're going to be that safe in the future. There's hope, though. I think if you go back to that idea of mochiwa, mochiya, and you start thinking and getting people that know what they're doing, security people, um, you know, field people, et cetera, to make sure we're solving these problems, we'll be fine. Thank you.